Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshal. Today, I want to talk about mass shootings. More specifically, the number of lives that are lost to mass shootings every year. Because we keep hearing in the media how mass shootings are an epidemic and how they're happening at an alarming rate. You know, you'll hear things like, oh, this weekend alone in Chicago, there were 38 mass shootings and four people died. And those numbers alone make you wonder, well, what constitutes a mass shooting? But that's a topic we'll cover in another video. Right now, I just want to deal with the numbers of lives that are lost every year to mass shootings. And I want to kind of put them in perspective here. First off, let's look at how many people total on average die from mass shootings every year. You know, it's going to be a massive number, right? Because of how much press it's getting. Well, it's actually about 40 people. Now that is a high number. I don't like seeing 40 people killed, period. But when you compare this to the other ways people die every year, it's pretty much an insignificant number. And we will show that here by looking at other causes of death. First, let's look at drowning. Every year in this country, there are 750 children that die from drowning every year. Now, compared to 40, that's a really high number. And you might wonder, well, why are politicians so worried about mass shootings when far more kids are drowning every year? Shouldn't they be doing something about drowning instead? Well, stopping all drowning would be hard. You know, lakes, rivers, pools, etc., and bathtubs. What are you going to do? Give everybody water wings and make them wear them all the time? Give lessons to kids in school, grade school maybe, on how to swim? That'd probably save some lives. In fact, it'd probably save more lives than you could save if you eliminated mass shootings altogether, because that's just 40 people a year total, much less how many of those are children compared to the 750 children that die every year. If you just stopped 10% of the children that drowned every year through other programs, you'd be more successful than you would if you stopped all mass shootings. But like I said, that would be hard to stop. So let's look at something more specific. Let's look at the number of people who die in bathtubs every year. When you look at the number of people who drowned in a bathtub every year, it's 335 people. That's eight times as many people who get killed in a mass shooting. So if you banned bathtubs, if you just said all new construction has to have showers, no tubs in this country. And if you say by the year blank, all tubs have to be converted into showers. You would save eight times as many lives as you would save if you stopped all mass shootings. And how many of these are children? Well, every year about 100 children die in a bathtub. So if politicians really cared about children's lives, they'd be wanting to ban bathtubs. And that's just if you just take children's lives into consideration. Because like I said, that's 100. That's two and a half times the number of people total who die by mass shootings. So you once again have to ask yourself, why are they so centered on mass shootings? Another cause of death to look at is how many members of our military die in the line of duty every year. Now, luckily, this isn't a huge number because we don't really have a lot of military deaths. It's 875 total soldiers that die every year in the line of duty. That's the average. Now, one is too many. But 875 is really, in the grand scheme of things, not that many people. And if you look at how many of those were under the age of 21, well, it's 500 of them. The vast majority are under the age of 21. So in this case, you have to ask yourself if politicians really care about the lives of people under the age of 21, if they care about the lives of children, and they, in a lot of their statistics, they classify anyone under 21 as a child. Well, if they're doing that, well, then, just by raising the age to join the military, they'd save far more lives. They'd save at least 500 under 21 lives every year by that. But there's no way they're going to do that. But it does show you how they're hypocritical when they talk about the reasons they want to ban assault weapons, etc. It's not about lives. It's about the tools themselves. Another thing to look at is drunk driving. Every year in this country, 10,500 people die from drunk driving. That's way more people than are killed in mass shootings every year. So why aren't politicians dedicating their time to stopping drunk driving? Maybe they should ban alcohol. That didn't work so well the first time, did it? But, you know, they could make it to where every car has a breathalyzer. They could make that a law. How many lives would that save? That would save tons of lives. 
I mean, comparing 10,500 to 40, you'd have to wonder, why are they spending so much time on those 40 people that died from mass shootings instead of dealing with the 10,500 that die from driving drunk every year? Now, luckily, the number of children that are killed by drunk drivers every year on average is only 205. It's not as big as you might think it is. But still, that's five times more than the total number of people who die by mass shootings. So once again, breathalyzers in all cars, that would solve that problem, save so many lives. But when was the last time you saw a politician standing on their pulpit, shaking their fists, saying we need breathalyzers in all cars? You haven't seen it because they don't care about lives. All right, now we come to homicides. Now, I bring this up for a very specific point, because if you look at the number of gun-related homicides in this country when you take out suicides, it's about 14,000 a year on average. If you look at people under the age of 21, it's about 1,500, so a little more than 10%. So, pretty big number there, way bigger than the number of people who die by mass shooting. So, why aren't politicians dealing with how most homicides involving a gun occur? Why aren't they dealing with gang violence, family violence, because domestic violence is the number one cause of death of children under the age of 21 when it comes to firearms? People who could have bought a gun, no matter how many restrictions you put on it because they had never committed a crime before, who act out in a crime of passion and kill people under the age of 21 that are in their family, that's something politicians don't want to deal with because it's a very unfriendly number and there's no way to really stop that. So they like to center on things like mass shootings because that helps them achieve a political goal. Once again, it's not about lives, it's about politics. Now let's really put the number of mass shootings every year in perspective and look at them compared to suicides. Every year in this country, we lose 43,000 lives to suicide, a lot of those veterans. And we lose about 4,500 teens to suicide every year. Those numbers dwarf the number of people that are killed in mass shooting events every year, dwarf them. You can't even hardly see it on the scale anymore. The number is so much greater. So why aren't politicians doing more about suicide? Well, it's because it's not easily cut up into buzz phrases. It doesn't achieve any political agendas. It costs money to deal with these problems. They don't just get to ban items and act like they did something. They would actually have to take accountability and actually create programs and then fund those programs. They don't want to do that. Not if it means saving lives and that's all it does. What they really want to do is achieve an agenda, make money, etc. And working to stop suicides doesn't do that. And preaching about it just draws attention to the fact that they failed to do anything about it. So they kind of shy away from it because once again, like I said, they don't care about lives. Now let's move on to one more cause of death in this country to put the number of deaths from mass shootings into perspective. And that is the number of people who die from taking opioids every year. I'm not talking about the total numbers of drug-related deaths or overdoses. I'm talking just opioids. Every year in this country, we lose 50,000 people to opioids, and 5,000 of those are children. So why isn't the federal government taking harsh moves against prescribing opioids? Why aren't they banned? They should have banned opioids by now if they cared about lives, because like I said, that's 50,000 people a year, 5,000 children a year from one type of drug. Ban it if you cared about lives. They don't care about lives. What they care about, like I said, is money from big pharma and political agendas like disarming the people. And if it isn't clear here in this statistic, than it is anywhere else, then I don't know what to tell you. You obviously don't want to see it because this is clear evidence. They don't care about lives. They care about money and agenda. And that's it. And if you really want to put these other things into perspective, look at how many people die from heart disease every year. It's like 650,000. Makes everything else look small. But those are personal choices as far as I'm concerned. You could probably save a lot of lives if they put programs into effect that made it to where People, especially lower income people, had access to healthier foods at an affordable price. They could probably save way more people than they would ever save by banning all guns, 
even if they were only like 5% effective in saving people from dying of heart disease. But like I said, that's how many people die every year from mass shootings compared to how many people die from other causes. And if you look at this chart, it's not hard to see that politicians don't really care about saving lives because if they did, they'd be up there on their pulpit every day shaking their fists about other things, wanting safer cars, wanting breathalyzers on cars, trying to uh, stop drownings by banning bathtubs, other things that would actually make a difference when it comes to saving lives. But they're not. They're up there over-exaggerating the number of people who die from mass shootings and using that to vilify things that they don't want the people to have. Weapons that they could fight back with if the government ever goes rogue. Or more rogue than it already is. That's their true agenda. It's not about saving lives. It's about making money and pushing a political agenda to disarm the people. And if you can't see that, then you're blind. And with that being said, I am done for the day. I want to thank everyone for coming. I do appreciate you being here, and I hope you come back again tomorrow. Until then, I just want to remind everyone to always carry and stay safe until I see you again. Mm -hmm.